Hello, welcome to the Thursday, February 24th, 2022 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. As I am recording this, of course, the situation in the Ukraine appears to be taking a turn for the verse. So I'll start with a couple of cyber related uh, news items that I have uh, regarding uh, Ukraine. First one is an alert by the NCSC uh, in the UK. The same alert was also published by other governments about a new version of the Sandworm malware. Sandworm is a family of malware that's commonly associated uh, with Russia and has been used against Ukraine in the past. In particular, a VPN filter was uh, very very sort of popular framework used there. And the write up was published uh, does uh, show details about a replacement framework that is called Cyclops Blink. Now, one thing that sort of uh, this uh, framework has in common with some of uh, the predecessors is that they are going after, well, these perimeter security devices that we have talked here in this past, in this podcast in the past, in particular, watch guard devices are sort of a preferred means to deploy Cyclops Blink. Keep those devices updated, even if you're not in the Ukraine, not associated with any Ukrainian entities. These uh, types of malware often spread beyond their initial intent. In particular, of course, NotPetya was sort of a famous example that's also sort of associated uh, with this sandworm activity. Indicators of compromise can be found in the write-up. And again, I'll link uh, to the NCSC one, uh, but you'll find similar write-ups from various vendors and government entities. And then a second news item comes from ESET and Symantec. They both wrote about a new wiper that they have seen deployed in the Ukraine. Wipers are typically malware that may claim it's ransomware, but its main goal is just to destroy the system, typically by overriding the master boot record. Tricky part about this malware is that yet again, it includes a valid signed driver. In this case, it uses a certificate from Chengdu, a tech development company. This company typically makes the EASIS data recover and disk management software. So legitimate company, legitimate certificate, unclear how it ended up. Uh, in the hands of whoever wrote this uh, wiper, but often the certificates or uh, the material to create them uh, gets stolen. So that's probably what happened here. Hashes and other details have been published uh, by ESET and Symantec, and samples can be downloaded from VirusTotal and other sources. There are also reports about denial of service attacks against various uh, Ukrainian uh, government sites. Of course, uh, those tend uh, to be uh, less sophisticated. Many of uh, the Ukrainian government sites are now behind services like uh, Cloudflare protecting them to some extent from a denial of service. On Friday at noon Eastern, we are also planning a SANS webcast about the topic of Ukraine. So more details about that probably uh, in tomorrow's podcast. And in Internet Storm Center Diaries, I did a quick wrap up of log for Shell today, just looking at some of the data we have collected over the last, well, uh, two or three months uh, now. Sort of interesting that pretty much most of the scanning activity happened in December. Not really much scanning for the vulnerability after uh, the new year. I guess it turned out to be a little bit more difficult to exploit against specific systems than uh, initially sort of estimated. So many of these early uh, quick exploit attempts that we have seen didn't really amount to much. And uh, the more targeted ones are probably still happening, but of course uh, not sort of trouncing our sensors like some of these early scans. 
And given uh, this uh, focus on uh, firewalls and parameter security devices, I just want to point out that PFSense released a new version of about a week ago on February 14th. And uh, now we have a blog post by web security company uh, Shiler uh, that uh, provides details about a remote code execution vulnerability in PFSense up to version uh, 252. So version 260 or PFSense plus uh, 22.01 oh, is the fix for this vulnerability. Exploitation does require authentication, but exploitation is also not all that difficult. It's sort of one of those classic remote code injection vulnerabilities. As an authenticated user, you're able uh, to retrieve routing information, which basically uses the netstat commands and, well, uh, shell arguments aren't properly escaped here. In Chinese security company Pangu Lab uh, did publish a very detailed report on a piece of malware that uh, they are uh, calling a BVP47. They associate this with uh, what's commonly known as the Equation Group or uh, the United States NSA and have a pretty good attribution here based on a private key that's shared uh, with some leaked tools uh, kind of interesting backdoor uh, very unique sort of in how it sets up uh, the connection with uh, send packets with specific uh, payload lengths so uh, read it make sure you are able to detect it uh, whenever things like this leak others are picking up the same technique so you definitely should be kind of familiar with this particular uh, setup well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.